How's it going, entomologists? My name is Jack, and you are tuned in to Kentucky Bugs. Welcome to National Moth Week. You may remember our video I did over butterflies, where I went over some general basics of butterflies and the life cycle of Lepidoptera, the order of butterflies and moths. Moths don't just have interesting biological factors, they also hold significance in certain cultures as well. Moths are associated with an irresistible attraction to light. Some cultures have attached this to the souls of the dead flying through the night to find the light. Moths are fascinating and beautiful, however their beauty does have a lot more function than form. Like butterflies, moths have scales all over their wings. They also have scales all over their bodies, making them look hairy or fuzzy. Now moth and mammal hair evolved completely independently of one another, however they have a similar look. Moth hair is actually made of chitin, which is also a primary component of fungi and insect exoskeletons. Moth scales have a lot of different uses, like our own hairs. Moth scales can act somewhat like a microphone cover. While this might protect a microphone from excess wind, a moth scales can protect a moth from things like echoes. When it comes to echoes, they can be deadly for moths. One of their biggest predators is bats, so being able to absorb rather than reflect an echo can be a matter of life and death. A study in 2020 conducted at the University of Bristol found that some moth scales can absorb an average of between 58 to 76 percent of a bat's radar. Talk about flying blind! Luna moths have long tails protruding from their wings. These can also act as a predator deterrent, similar to how lizards escape from their predators. Here's Blair from Idlewild Butterfly Farm to tell us about the Luna moth. So the tails are pretty cool. If you look at the little at the tails, there's actually an entomologist doing some work, I want to say in Idaho, just a few years ago, on the importance of the tails. And the tails, actually, they help them to escape bats. They help with flight, but they also, sometimes you'll find them in the wild and they don't have their tails. They escaped a predator. Spiders also get tricked with moth scales. These scales can fall off like dust and make moths more resistant to being stuck in spider webs. So we learned that moth scales can be used for escape and auditory camouflage. However, they can also be used for visual camouflage. You've probably seen many examples of them, either online or in person. You may even remember a particular example from school. In the 19th century, during the Industrial Revolution, a lot of soot-spitting factories were built. This led to trees that were formerly bright being darkened. Now this was a big problem for the light-colored pepper moths, who could no longer blend into the trees that they used to rest on during the day. A small portion of the population had a darker color more. They were able to do much better on the darker trees and eventually became the majority. And then around the 50s, everyone got tired of not being able to breathe and started to focus on environmental health. A little bit of focus, but focus nonetheless. Points for trying. And because of this, the trees were lighter once again. This took away the advantage of the dark colored moths and gave it back to the light colored moths. Now that's some really interesting stuff, but did you know that moths use their scales not just to blend in, but to stand out? Many moth species feature large distinctive spots on their wings known as eye spots. These spots are usually highly contrasted on the wings. They also can have a translucent reflective center. This makes sense, as a true animal eye would reflect light in some way, making the eye seem more realistic. These eye spots may appear like a bullseye to a predator, and a moth might survive an attack to the wing as opposed to an attack to the body or head. There are around 160,000 species of moth in the world, so planting native host plants like blue sage and common evening primrose can be helpful. Bug zappers are by definition super deadly to moths. Some might use them to target biting insects. However, in a study from the University of Florida, it was found that out of around 10,000 insects killed in one night, only eight were mosquitoes. Moths are significant organisms in our ecosystem. Always remember that no bug's role is too small. Thank you all so very much for watching. We'll have another video up like this next week. If you're bugging for more content though, make sure to check out our other social media pages. We have exclusive content coming throughout the week. And lastly, what do you call an aquatic ant? An amphibian. Thank you very much.